Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Uh, churches, startups. Seriously? Seriously. I'm here to tell you, I've done startups of companies, I've done startups of nonprofits, and I've done startups of churches. And I'm here to tell you that they are a lot more similar than you think. Think of what the best leaders do in both. And then when you think about what people do in faith-based organizations, they are starting communities. This is going very fast. <laughs> so just think about it for a second. When you're thinking about when you're thinking about the forces at work, you have exponential change and you have you have the rise of the nuns. <laughs> so I'm not talking about the nuns on the bus. I'm talking about those people who answer on religious... Uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm talking about how people who answer on religious surveys say that they do not choose any of the above. And churches are also coming apart faster than we can think about. What happens today is that we have people who think that uncertainty gets taken over by conformity, that you can take conformity and get rid of, of uncertainty, and instead, it had the opposite happens. So when we were starting our church, it was like taking a ride through a wormhole. We didn't know how we were gonna get out. What we did was get to a minimum viable belief, a vision that transcends existence, a vision that transcends success. It was taking ourselves down as far as we could go to the why of the whys. So in our congregation, everything is centered around what we call rapid iteration prototyping, adapt, apply, assess, and then tweak or toss. We call it RIP because it reminds us that it's okay for bad ideas to die. We've been doing this for 20 years, from startup to expansion, from worship and education, to working our membership campaigns and our marketing campaigns. This one has to be the one that takes a long time. <laughs> so let's start with one example, prototyping programs. We knew we didn't have enough children in our programs, in our church, and so we got together a parents group, we got the children's design together, we launched it. They said it was everything that we wanted, that they wanted, but not quite. We launched the service, we asked the team to look at it again, and what they told us was, well, they kind of missed their adult sermons. So, we took what we had done with the children's, what we had done with the adults, and put them together. Adult sermons, children's play, we called it intergenerational. They loved it. On the other hand, with more kids coming, there were people with young kids, there were people with young babies. The mothers didn't want to nurse in church because they thought we might look at them the wrong way. So I went to my assistant, uh, who told me that she would be willing to to do what we called a holy nursing campaign, to let people know that it was okay to do that in church. So, member giving. We're probably not the only people who are always tweaking our pledge campaigns. We bought a really, really good program campaign and hated it. So, we liked only one piece of it, the part called a giving estimate. And we started a giving estimate campaign. Rather than pledge, which spoke of obligation, it's the idea of giving estimates spoke of freedom. So we took that again another round into reasons not to give. We asked people to think about why shouldn't you give? And what we found from that is that we got a 20% increase in giving. It was amazing. So this year we're going even farther. We're killing our annual pledge campaign and instead having a year-long discussion of ministry, money, membership, and then finally, what could startups steal from us? Well, minimum viable belief. Vision creates culture. If you can stick to a minimum culture, a minimum viable belief, you can create a culture that, that can outlast its founder from startup to maturity. That's it.